I wanted some of those longer shafts to fall underneath. You know what I mean? Yep. Dropping in. Exactly. Starting your exactly. coals into the into the bottom. Much better. I see flames. Try it a couple different ways. I see flames. I see smoke. Nice. Let's hope that'll stay. Nice feeding it delicately. Got an old soul crow looking over us just as we started striking fire. It's like the uh, raven from Vikings. Ah. We had to get fire started or we wouldn't get into Valhalla. Okay. <laughs> ah! What do you say, Rolo? What do you say, Floki? Floki! Oh, you yeah! were so Floki, dude. Yeah. At least she didn't call me Lotharga. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be creepy. She's too fine. He'd be dreaming if she was out here with us oh, today. Man. Be dying. We'd already have fire. I'd be like, what do you <laughs> We'd need? We'd have a bonfire and what, there'd be a pig on it. What can I do for you, Lagertha? <laughs> I don't know if that's going to go. It's wanting to. You got some more uh, up here fire sticks that haven't even caught yet if you want to roll those over and just suck them into, pull them into the fire a little bit. No, I lost it. It's okay. It happens. We'll fix it. Probably uh, think, yeah, quartered right. or maybe even a little bit smaller. The Stuff. tinder that you yeah, had to yeah. begin with that was underneath. Yeah. <clears throat> and then also stacked a little bit more densely the um, it was so open. log cabin, the different layers with, um, yeah, I think it was a little bit too open and the fuel was a little bit too big. Yeah. It would have been a really nice yeah. layer to have underneath the layer that we have right now. Yeah, you did good by stacking up those micro sticks, dude. Hell yeah. This one looks like that a is winner! Definitely fur. God, those oils. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> right in my face. <laughs> but we have fire. I suppose I should get mine rolling. Looks like we finally got it going. So now while uh, we got a fire rolling, I think we'll also try uh, a little bit of comparison on these uh, couple Espit stoves that we found. Two different models, a little bit different in size. Personally, I think I like this one here. This is about uh, a little a little wider than a pack of bare ass camels, a little bit skinnier, but uh, I think I kind of dig that one. We've got two different types of fuel. We've got these round uh, fuel tabs. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this one up right now. And um, I think burn in some fuel caps uh, just for the hell of it to see how these things work. Uh, no problem. So this is what we're using in this one. 
and then this little stove got the little aspic cubes. <coughs> These cubes being square that it runs in. There's a little square platform right here. Uh, ventilation holes here to uh, allow air circulation and then round holes underneath, which my first test of this stove, uh, I put some tin foil on here and then I had this like little coffin shaped piece of unburnt fuel in the bottom. I got about nine and a half, ten minutes of burn time off of it. I got the water up to 198 degrees. That was a um, one quart, I think, 16 ounces of uh, water that I boiled. I'll show you that uh, container, this one right here. And um, the difference between the two stoves, this one being the round fuel tablets, it just looks like it's got a little bit different ventilation pattern on the bottom. I'm kind of suspecting it might leave a little puck here in the center of unburnt. So I'm going to go ahead and center this over one of the holes or maybe put it right on the edge. <clears throat> the idea, at least what we're thinking and planning, is that uh, we'd like to be able to light these stoves off of a sparker, off of a barrel rod. So, hello. Party foul. Party foul. <clears throat> what I'm going to try and do is just simulate, say we uh, struck a feather stick, and then basically going to use that to light these. And um, I don't know if Izzy's got uh, his phone, he can start it running for a timer. I'm going to try and light both of these up, and then we'll see if we can do a time burn, uh, see how they run. I'm going to just try and take a uh, match out of here and see if I can get these things running. Now, I didn't do any scratching of the tops of these to get them running, which is what I would probably recommend doing. But uh, we'll see if we can get it going without even scratching the tops. You're already 15 seconds in on that one, by the way. Uh, the burn hasn't started, so let's go ahead and... Oh, you said... I thought you meant... One, once condition. we get them both burning, let's um, start it at that point. Well, this definitely started the other day with uh, scratching the top quite a bit quicker. Scratching the top, you mean? Yeah. Let me have that uh, GSO or anything. Yeah, increase the surface. I hope that's not burning. Just uh, scratch up a little bit of dust in the center. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Try and get it into the center. Hello. Geez, I wonder if polar fleece is flammable. My face is. The heat coming off this fire is getting intense. That's hot. Hot, hot fire. Yep, look at that. A little bit of dust on there and it just uh, fires right up. Looks like it's pretty susceptible to wind right now. I think the air that's drafting into this fire is probably being problematic for getting that going. But uh, we'll see how this one starts up. This one's barely burning in the center. You can see, I think I like the white <clears throat> color because I can see it turning brown as it's burning. But um, it's definitely not taken off uh, like these square cubes. The square cube right now, I would say it's ready water all ready to be on top of it. Let's, uh, you got the timer running? Been, the red one's been burning for about two already. And you just got the white one going. Oh, shit. Let's see if I can do this without burning myself. Oh, that was a nice uh, lesson learned. I think this will be a fair test. The only thing you could say might not be fair 
is that the uh, gold colored the smaller stove. Uh, we've got the airflow constricted a little bit by folding it in to be able to support the bottle. And the uh, black one, the larger one, <clears throat> is open so it's probably going to you know, just have a little bit more airflow, burn a little more freely. Um, we're expecting that the white round disc, A, it's smaller, that it's going to burn less time, um, but we'll see. Uh, I definitely think the white one's got an odor that I didn't notice. Uh, this white round fuel cube versus the square one. Uh, there's an odor I'm smelling right now that I didn't smell running this over the other day. Fire is uh, going to be burning down. Uh, upside down fire, it should be burning down into itself. The um, coals and embers should be dropping down onto a bed and then hopefully that bed will drop down into the bed that's below it. <clears throat> what do you think the water bottle and the whole Pretty test? sweet. What I thought was really cool is this uh, stainless steel uh, grab handle. Even when the water was up 200 degrees, just reach in, pick it up. It didn't transfer any heat to it. it worked out really nice. Yours made <clears throat> more sense. Smaller. Well, they're they're different. You got to have a big different pop size. That one. Mine. Well, you can fold the lid in the same, but actually, let's do that. Let's see if I can do that. Temperature's up. Ooh, I don't think I want to pick coals. it up, but I'm just going to fold it in to restrict the air a little bit. I'm guessing this one's probably too hot to touch. Just gonna turn them, try to without screwing the pooch. Let's uh, take that off, turn that so you can see it. And what am I doing? I can grab that handle. Definitely got a draft coming through here. I'm gonna see if I can just get it. <coughs> A little bit of a draft stop on this side here. I'm taking all the wood. It's wet. It's this shit's wet. As that wood's wet. Yeah. It's very wet. Put it on the outskirts. Let it dry out soon. So this is uh, what we're talking about: the difference in fuel capsules. Another thing that uh, becomes evident when you think about it: these uh, <laughs> hermetically sealed. They're going to be watertight, waterproof, until you go to use them. You could very easily stick these into a Ziploc baggie, uh, put them in a film canister, uh, Sircut's container, something like that, uh, Altoids tin. But uh, these are going to be watertight, even if you pack drops in the water, you know, if you're rafting, running down a river, uh, falling by mistake, you're out waterfall hunting, you know, you're going over the top of your waders. Uh, I think that little aspect stone has got some really killer applications. We're also hoping to maybe do a little bit of a burn with the stoves using wood, expecting that we're going to get more heat burning wood in them than what we would get uh, just burning these fuel caps. I'm going to go ahead and pause now and uh, we'll come back. Eh. We'll let it run. <clears throat> that way there's no question about how long anything took to, to do anything. I'm going to try and get a little bit uh, bigger air dam here. <clears throat> Izzy, come here for a second. Yeah. Skookum danger! <sighs> see the airflow? <clears throat> you can see the flames on this side. There's my hand. The flames are all blowing through on this side. I'm going to put an air block here, and now we get nice even Creeping, flame yep. all the way around. Cool. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> so just paying attention to the surroundings and what's going on. Um, all I know is the more I know, the less I know. Basically just means I learn, try to, from everything. That's why we're here, man. Looks like I've probably got about half the uh, fuel cube 
left in this one. Maybe a little bit less than half. Uh, definitely got the signs of bubbles on the bottom of the water container. <clears throat> this white fuel cube, I would say, probably looks like it's uh, at least halfway burned through. Let me see if I can uh, get you a zoom in on that. You can see the uh, fuel cubes, maybe. that uh, wind block out of there. <clears throat> Interesting loud. Now it looks like all the air is drafting to this side. I'm going to go ahead and place this block on the other side now and see if it evens up. And sure enough it does. Well, not quite as much. I think the main thing is just probably to have an air block on one side or the other. <clears throat> and this looks like a uh, opportunity to make a stainless steel uh, little piece of sheet metal that would slide onto one side that would become an air block or a windshield windscreen. What the hell's going on over there? Good. Except for the wood. This is that end piece. One was stuck in the ground, so it's a little marked up. There we go. We've got some more fuel. And without showing anybody's faces, wanted. Wanted in a couple different states, so. Speaking of wanted, our first little uh, feather sticking and uh, fire striking left us wanting. Yes. Lesson learned. Seems like uh, every other time you go out, you first fire, you don't have enough spare small fuel. Small, small kindling and a handful of extra feather sticks just to uh, dress up the fire a little bit, put a little bit of extra fuel in. So the little round cube right now looks like uh, the only thing we got really going there is an ember. I don't see any flame on that There's one. There's a flame on the little white one. Okay. Just, <clears throat> I mean, I can see it. And it looks like uh, the square cube is gone. So, oh, look at that steam coming off. Let me, uh, I might have to zoom in on that to check that. That's uh, that's ready for a cup of coffee, I would say. So we're going to do a little bit more burn testing on these just to see what's going with them. But um, surprisingly, it looks like we got a little bit longer burn time off of this little round cube. <clears throat> but effectively, I think you can see there's uh, very little flame coming off of that. That's a little hard, like a pyramid poke right there. I should have stirred this a little bit. So exactly what we said at the beginning of this video, <clears throat> putting one of these round cubes in the center of this is going to leave you a center coal that uh, is not going to burn all the way down. So part way through, get a stick, push it over, you know, towards one of the holes to bend. And uh, this gold S bit up here, it's uh, if you just place the cube right in the center of it, it looks like it's going to burn down. 100% because of the way the venting is in the base. You know, that's, that's dust. <laughs> Nothing left there but dust. So 
What do you think? We want to roll right into doing a wood fire in one of these? I want to set up my ember lit. Okay. Now that we've, I need to get some more wood and split it down fine so it'll fit in there. Okay. So we're talking about uh, this little titanium castle that we're going to build. Um, hey, dude, I got four of a kind. <laughs> you want to play some poker? And I got a one-eyed jack right here, too. I got a one-eyed jack for you. <laughs> Hello. So we're going to pause and uh, come back to this one. I think uh, we're not going to use fuel cubes in this. What we're going to do is we're just going to stoke this one up with wood, and then we'll stoke one of these two up with wood also, and um, see how they burn. Okay, so the uh, little castle, uh, titanium ember lit. It be interesting to see uh, what kind of tie colors we get out of this thing. I'm going to go ahead and move my uh, bottle of water over here. And um, <clears throat> let's see. We've got a base, two cross pieces is three, and four sides, seven pieces total. I'm going to assume <clears throat> the logo goes on the front. And it looks like it's got a little feed box for your firewood going in here. <laughs> That's kind of, well, we won't even go there. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> coming from a framing background, I start at the back of the house when I start construction. I typically pull from the back right-hand corner because I'm a right-handed person. And let's see if I can be intelligent enough to put this Lincoln log thing together. My freaking knees are smoking right now. Holy Hot. smokes, that fire is raging. You got some good Oh man, I gotta get this thing put together quick. Okay, so <clears throat> don't assemble the front piece until you put the base in. Just by looking at this thing, we're assuming we're gonna need airflow in the bottom, i.e., drill some holes in the bottom of this thing. There's airflow all the way around the outside, but we're thinking also in the bottom, or put a grate. What we'll do is we'll probably, we're thinking we're going to build a little mini upside down fire in here. So the biggest wood on the bottom, progressively up to the top, feather sticks on the top, we'll light a feather stick, and then drop it on the pile. Oh man, I got to get out of here. Ah, uh, come on, go together. Shit, that's hot. <laughs> oh my god, that's hot. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we uh, built it backwards and we'll put the Emberlet logo on the inside. I got some fuel for you. Note to self, on one of these pieces right back outside, this back outside, left outside, right outside, and obviously the front. I think that's a, that's a good thing to do, and the bottom self-explanatory. So there we go. Okay, now we're going to uh, put a little upside down log fire. We'll go ahead and point the... Uh, front of the feed tube to the camera. So we're back with you. I'm basically going to create a uh, <clears throat> upside down stack, upside down fire log cabin effect inside this uh, uh, emberlet. Is that what it is? Yes sir, emberlet. Uh, scoop danger back here, feather sticking, getting some feather sticks ready for the top of it. So we're going to start out and say, okay, what's our length that we want? Maximum length is going to be about like that. I'm choosing the outside pieces of wood for the bottom rack because they're potentially going to always be the wettest of the wood that you're going to be working with. Dang, someone's getting on the tree over there. You got a uh, baton handy. There we go. There you go. Oh. I got it.
system here. There's my measure, there's my length. I'm also looking to not only pick the outside pieces, but the um, <clears throat> larger pieces also. So, lesson to self there. Uh, leave the outer pieces. Hello. No, nope. give me that back. Leave the outer pieces uh, as the larger, whether you're building the upside down in the campfire or like what we're doing here, so that they'll be on the bottom of your fire and they'll naturally be drying as you're uh, working your way through the different layers of wood. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Sitting this close to the fire, you almost need to take off your coat, huh? Fucking yeah. hot. This uh, little spot right here, which isn't level, it's a little convexity in the log, just as a natural place that <coughs> when the wood's on it, striking it here with the blade, um, it's just tending to pop the pieces. I'd like to be able to say I was smart enough to think about that before I started, but uh, sometimes things just work out that way. Fire is still hot. 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 <coughs> that is a nice rack of coals we got going yeah, there, man. Yeah. Time yeah, to start uh, nice cooking some bacon. We had some. Bring in a New York's. I know. Cedar place. slab. And a New burgers. York cooked on a cedar slab. I know, right? I think uh, we're going to Green Valley Meats <laughs> next time before we come here, and we're going to get a uh, box of New York's. So I'm just about out of this stuff. If we need ready more to build. Wood, <clears throat> I got you a couple feathers here. A little pile of. So if I had some chopsticks, I could drop these in real nice. <clears throat> make some chopsticks. <laughs> could make some chopsticks. See if we could just get them in through the hole. That's what I would hope. Yep. Beautiful. We're gonna make this layer maybe uh I'm thinking a quarter inch in between the pieces, if I can, give or take. Nothing like being anal, analytical. Analytical. Yeah, I think the way to do it, <clears throat> you get the pieces, put them in diagonally, rotate. Woo! Woo, that's hot. Fucker's hot. There's going to be one thing to say about starting a fire in a hot firebox. <laughs> This thing's never had a fire in it, but it's sitting next to... Yep, can't hold my hand there any longer. And I'm <clears throat> going to leave some pieces out here, kind of in order by size to feed in. And um, let's see, there's some feathers. I'll go ahead and drop some of these right on top. And I think Skookum Danger's got some over here for me too. Go ahead and put this uh, pile. I'm going to go ahead and leave a couple pieces off to the side as backup pieces. And uh, also enough for him to uh, obviously get his 
fire still striker going and strike one of these feathers off that we can drop in. So you got a fire steel, you wanna go sparky? Two seconds. Alright. What the hell? You got your own video going? <clears throat> I'm being a pocket down. Also, another note to self. Got uh, Fielson Shaps on here today. Um, I noticed when I was getting hot something that I didn't think about. The wax on my canvas shaps was melting. Um, very, very supple and pliable. Normally these things will stand up and walk all by themselves. They're so stiff. Uh, this is con cotton. I'm sure it's not fire retardant. This is waxed or oiled cotton. Um, note to self, it's probably flammable. Enough said on that. Okay. You ready to spark? I think I'm going to use the, the Endura. Is this what you want me to spark? Anything. Something we can just stick in here and get this pile of, pile of uh, goodness going. <coughs> towards the... Yep. Let me hold your base for you see if that might help a little. Boy, that's just raining just down. Just raining it down, dude. My problem is the feathers I made aren't... There you go. Okay, so it'll have some fuel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to help. That's going to go. Yeah, that I don't think go. there's any, so long as we don't mess it up by stuffing stuff into it, but, um... Yeah, the Endura did. <laughs> <clears throat> so in general, I would say that uh, pretty much as soon as these burn down beyond the top level here, this thing's probably ready to put a pot on top or a water bottle, stainless water bottle, whatever you want. And um, <clears throat> that would reduce the airflow a little bit, but I don't think it would reduce it enough to really be a problem. And uh, this is a time when, you know, we just dumped all of our feathers on the first time through. Uh, once again, made the same mistake. Uh, it looks like it's going to keep going, but if it doesn't, uh, we should probably have some feathers hanging out. Hey! There he just goes and puts our reserve fuel in again. <laughs> Bastard. Here, I'll tell you how you get it started. Give it somewhere to feed up. See? That way you make the fire fight to live. My thought. By just putting a couple cross hatchers. Watch that go up now. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> no, but you might as well have. <laughs> I texted I texted you that last night though, didn't I? Here now we should really cheat. I'm gonna go ahead and insert this small white cube no, into no. the fire. Oh there you go. <laughs> no, don't cheat. <laughs> but see, just putting those couple sticks on top is letting the fire fight to live versus putting all your stock and hoping it'll burn down without that much oxygen in that tank or in that stove rather my thought because look at it go now yeah but it's not an it's upside down fire now yeah, it is it's, it'll, it'll it's, catch and it's burn inversely down. upside down it's technically an upside down fire it's just like building a building you know what if there's anything that we complain about more than anything what is it everybody having to have a Separate name for something. Yep. It's called building a fire. But and uh, whatever works, fire. man. Yep. So you're saying we're not going to need any more feathers. Okay. Leave them off to the I, side. I think I think it'll look at it go. Matter of fact, I should get my pack <clears throat> finder. So Andy, so you can see, this is what I've been wearing and carrying. GSO 4.1. Working nicely. Sits here. I'm able to do everything I need in this carry. Not I've got a belt buckle small. underneath it and it's not getting in the way at all. Seems to be working quite nicely. And your old hickory butcher is just hanging out in the back of the 
optionally, which I haven't even uh, put the knife in the sheath. I'm also uh, running the dangler just to see. And at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, convert over to the dangler and just kind of see how it feels. Right now, if that was uh, on the front of my belt, where my belt buckle is, it would probably make me feel really good having that dangling like that. <laughs> but uh, if you catch my drift, I don't know that I would like it dangling down to the side. I think I'm really liking this uh, scout carry. This is where I carry my Browse Silent Soldier Ranger V2. Also where I carry a Spider Coast Swick version 3. Um, got a Halpern Technology or Halpern Titanium uh, G10 scales on the Swick and then a Kydex sheet that fits here. My Browse Silent Soldier Ranger with a Kydex sheet fits right here on my belt also. So I'm really tending to think that, I mean, look at this. This is like, okay, two hands. I could get it out with one, but for the most part, you know, safe draw would be two hand draw out. This is a one hand draw configuration from here. So for me at least, my body build, I'm tending to think uh, this might be the cat's meow for this knife. Let's get a little bit of check in on our uh, stove, see how she's running. I'm going to zoom you guys in so you can see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can unmount the camera here from the tripod without <coughs> causing too much of a problem. I'd like to try and get down into that firebox and kind of show you what's going on. Without cutting away. back into this tripod without making you too seasick, man. Yeah, rock star there, man. That... Hopefully you're not puking in your uh, skivvies there. <clears throat> so let's uh, talk about feeding it now. Once again, um, your feed, you wouldn't want your sticks to be any longer than that. <clears throat> so I think realistically, once again, the goal would be just like when you're processing wood for the fire, process all your wood ahead of time that you're going to be burning in the stove. So it looks to me that, uh, you know, that <clears throat> length, you know, right there, right about four inches, you know, I don't have a tape measure with me, but I kind of have something maybe three and a half, uh, three and a half to uh, three and three quarter inches on the sticks for this thing. <coughs> Optional feed method, which um, I think I'm actually going to try. I'm going to just distribute these coals, make them kind of level, and then see if I can uh, feed I'm not going to go with that one yet. I'm going to go with this one, a little bit smaller. Feed a couple pieces that are about that length and see if we can feed this kind of like a rocket stove. Um, that would be really kind of a cool way to do it. Just keep pushing the wood in just like a rocket stove. <coughs> Ultimately, I think uh, I'm actually headed towards putting something together similar to this, lightweight in stainless maybe, or titanium, probably the first prototype in stainless, effectively create a rocket stove. So you'd have an intake feed here, a tube would run horizontally, and then there would be a fire chamber, a chimney that comes up the top. So you'd have a draft tube, and then you'd have a chimney, and then your pots would sit on top of the chimney, so the fire wouldn't be open on the top, um, right above where it's burning. 
I'm burning over here, drafting and flaming up and in. And I think this is kind of a step in that direction. On top of that slag. So our fire that we started, uh, our upside down <coughs> fire, still rocking and rolling. It's got a uh, beautiful coal bed going. The bottom layer of wood, half rounds, look like about two and a half inch diameter. Absolutely perfect size to be um, splitting, batoning with say, I don't know, maybe you could even do it with a three, three and a half inch knife, but ultimately a four inch or longer blade. And um, that bottom layer of coals is uh, right now level on the top and would be absolutely perfect to clear off a little bit of this and then maybe, for example, set a pot on it, pan, something like that. You know, just move these things forward like this. And then right there, you know, that's that's cooking coals. Wonderful looking cooking coals, as far as I'm concerned. You know, take your pot, your water, or whatever. Make sure it's not going to fall over. Smoking. Hey, that's hot. Damn, nation. Well, we're on a downhill slope right now, and um, I think that would, again, speak to future fires and planning. Um, if you're going to try and <clears throat> get down to this bottom layer of half rounds like this, where you've got a nice, beautiful bed of coals that's built up for those, and you're going to want to cook on that as a flat bed, start on flat ground, and um, then you'd have a wonderful cooking plank. So I'm just going to let that uh, sit. That's a fresh uh, 16 ounces of water and um, we'll see how long that takes to uh, come to boil.